the engine room. It is the ship's very own power plant. Its primary function is to generate the power necessary for the ship's propulsion and electricity. Installed within is a complex system of various machinery with different functions but working together in order for the ship to be able to transport its cargo from one port to the next. On today's episode, I'm going to take you on a tour of the engine room and make a short explanation on the functions of the different machinery on board. Let's go. Before I forget, once we enter the engine room, it's going to be very, very loud. So you won't be able to understand the word that I'm saying. So we're going to have to rely on my voiceover narrations while I explain the function of the different machinery inside the engine room. Before entering the engine room, we must make sure to wear personal protective equipment like ear protection, helmet, and safety shoes. Let's go! This ship is a bulk carrier with a gross registered tonnage of 43,000. The systems installed in this engine room are typical and could be found in almost all ships driven by a diesel main engine. The first piece of machinery we will encounter upon entering the engine room is the auxiliary boiler. The boiler produces pressurized steam which is used primarily for heating, either by burning fuel or using the heat from the main engine exhaust gas. On the same platform are the air compressors. As their name implies, they produce compressed air which is then stored in the air reservoirs at a maximum pressure of 30 bar. Compressed air is used to kickstart the main engine and the generator engines and also for pneumatic control and general service. Right next to the compressors is the incinerator. Its primary function is to burn sludge and waste oil. It is also used to burn garbage like oily rags and paper products. The entrance to the steering gear room is also located on this level. The first thing you'll notice as soon as you enter is the emergency fire pump compartment. This room also houses the hydraulic power pack. This unit's function is to drive the various deck machinery by means of hydraulic pressure. The steering gear is the system for controlling the direction of the ship. It is remotely controlled from the helm or the steering wheel, which is located up on the bridge. The helm sends the signal to the system, which then drives the ship's rudder to the desired angle by means of hydraulic power.
The largest machine inside the engine room is of course the main engine. On this ship, the main engine is a six-cylinder, two-stroke, electronically controlled man BMW engine with a rated capacity of 9,660 kilowatts at 89 revolutions per minute. Electronically controlled type engines have no camshaft, therefore the fuel injection and exhaust valve actuation timings are controlled by a computer and driven by hydraulic pressure. These are the purifiers. They are used to remove impurities such as water and heavy solid particles from fuel oil and lubricating oil by means of centrifugal force. Right next to them is the fuel circulating and supply system which is composed of pumps, heaters, and filters. From there, you go to the freshwater generator. This type utilizes the principle of distillation, whereby seawater is evaporated and then condensed within a vacuum shell. As soon as the salt content has been reduced to acceptable levels, the distilled water can now be pumped into the freshwater tanks. This ship has three sets of generator engines. They are four-stroke Daihatsu diesel engines, each with a capacity of 610 kilowatts. The generators provide the ship with electricity, and since all of the ship's systems, lighting, communication, propulsion to name a few, rely on electricity, the generators are the most vital machines on board a ship. The engine workshop is located on this level. It is the place dedicated for general work like welding, cleaning, fabrication, and repair. The workshop is a very convenient location for most tasks as all the general tools are kept here. On the lowest floor of the engine room is where the various seawater pumps are installed. From here, you'll also be able to inspect the tank tops. Right beside the bilge pump is the oily water separator. Its main function is to filter any traces of oil from the bilge water before allowing it to be pumped out to the sea. The bilge water must not exceed an oil content of 15 parts per million for it to be discharged overboard. On this level, we will also find the crankcase doors of the main engine. And at the aft part of this level, we can get a view of the main engine flywheel. As you can see, the propeller shaft is directly coupled to the main engine. This means that the propeller revolves at exactly the same speed and direction as the main engine's revolution. We have now reached the lowest and aftmost part of the engine room. From here, we can inspect the aft bilge well and also see the intermediate shaft go through the stern tube.
after going around the engine room, it's time to cool down a bit and head inside the engine control room. The engine control room is the command center of the engine room. From here, the engineers can control the main engine, start and synchronize the generators, monitor the various parameters, and acknowledge any alarms. And since it houses a lot of electronic components, it is the only part of the engine room which has air conditioning. So that's the engine room for you. It's very loud and it's very hot. So today, just outside the engine room, the temperature was 45 degrees Celsius. Working on board a cargo ship is not a very glamorous prospect. Working in the engine room is even less so. Doing dirty jobs in uncomfortably hot ambient temperatures with extremely loud noise is not a situation which everyone would find appealing. But it is what it is. And someone's gotta do it, right? <laughs> 